Mike sent in a question that's relevant to my article, uh, my new ideal article, finding morality and happiness without God. And here's Mike's uh, question, reading. Many religious leaders argue that a purely secular outlook cannot provide answers or at least satisfying answers to the following key questions of life. Identity, who am I? Value, why do I matter? And purpose, why am I here? So that's Mike's question. And in answer to it, I would say that the, the, what religious thinkers here are saying is the reverse of the actual truth, that religion does not offer satisfying answers to any of these questions. And in contrast, I think objectivism, uh, Ayn Rand's philosophy, does. So take this first idea of identity. Who am I? What does a religion tell you? It tells you that you're some kind of uh, strange combination of the natural and the supernatural, that you have one foot in the natural world. That's the world of the material, of the body, of flesh and bone. And you have one foot in some alleged supernatural world, uh, the world to come, your soul uh, is part of that or is trying to reunite. To that dimension and reunite with God. So you have this, you have kind of this split personality in religion, what it tells you. One foot in the natural world, one foot in the supernatural world. And what can they tell you about your identity insofar as it's supernatural? Nothing positive. Uh, and this was a point that Ayn Rand herself emphasized, that when they speak of the supernatural, it is all negation. She called it an act of wiping out. So it's not an act of telling you what the identity is, but of telling you what it is not. Uh, here's how she put it in Atlas Shrugged. Quote, what identity are they able to give to their superior realm? They keep telling you what it is not, but never tell you what it is. All their identifications consist of negating. God is that which no human mind can know, they say, and proceed to demand that you consider it knowledge. God is non-man. Heaven is non-earth. Soul is non-body. Virtue is non-profit. A is non-A. Perception is non-sensory. Knowledge is non-reason. Their definitions are not acts of defining but of wiping out, close the quote from Atlas. And if you think in contrast to this, what objectivism tells you is that you are squarely of this world, the only world that exists, the natural world. You have a genetic uh, makeup and you live in a certain environment, social environment and a natural environment. But what is also crucial about you is that you possess a mind, you possess the faculty of reason, that you're capable of thinking, of forming ideas, and charting your course in life accordingly. And crucially, what objectivism says is that part of the natural world and part of the functioning of your own mind, of a rational mind, of a human mind, is that you make choices that you're able to choose between alternatives and that everyone does this and indeed must do this, that everyone faces uh, numerous choices throughout the, uh, one's life. And so the question, who am I? What objectivism says about that is, you are that which you create by your choices. Who am I? That which I've created by the choices I've made throughout my life. And one of the ways that Ayn Rand formulates this point in objectivism, she says that just as you as a human being are a being of self-made wealth, that as human beings we have to produce all the values from cars to computers to cell phones that sustain and make life possible and enjoyable. Uh, a man is a being of self-made wealth. So as well, she says, 
Man is a being of self-made soul. You make your own soul, your own personal identity. You form your character by your choices. So objectivism as a secular philosophy has something very deep and profound to say about the question, who am I? And now if you take the other two uh, issues that Mike raised in his question about value, why do I matter, and purpose, why am I here? Again, I think a religion does not offer satisfying answers to these questions. Why do I matter? What a religion, and think, say, of the Judeo-Christian tradition, uh, what a religion says in regard to these is you don't matter. What matters is God. To all the glory belongs God. To all the glory is belongs to God. You're basically a cog in the machine. You exist to fulfill his uh, desires, his purposes, his plans. So it's you don't matter. There's no real answer. Why do I matter? The answer is you don't matter. And then if you ask, um, why am I here? It, the basic answer that religion gives, I again think of the Judeo-Christian tradition, is you're here to fulfill God's plan or God's purposes. But why does God have a plan? Or why does he have purposes? This is a supposed um, perfect being, all-knowing, all-powerful, uh, all-good. Why does he need to do anything? He's eternal. He can't be affected by anything. He can't be destroyed. He can't go out of existence. He doesn't have any needs, any desires, any wants, any interests. There's no, it's not intelligible to speak that he has some kind of plan, that he's trying to accomplish something or do something. Um, why does he need to create a world? Why does he need to create human beings? He doesn't. He doesn't need anything. He doesn't have any interest. So the, this whole conception of God as this kind of father figure who has a plan, who has purposes, I think when you really think about it, and you think what a religion is asking you to try to imagine with its conception of God, it's unintelligible why there's any purposes, interests, needs here. In contrast, what objectivism says about the issue of uh, why do I matter and why am I here, uh, or what on the issue of purpose, it has a tremendous amount to say. Um, and crucial in regard to value is it's the answer to why do I matter is not for the sake of something else, for the sake of a God or for the sake of other people, you serve God and his plans or you serve other people and their plans. You matter to yourself. Why do I matter? Because I'm a living being who exists here on earth for a brief span of time and I can live my life and fully and truly live it or not. So who do you matter to? You matter to yourself. <clears throat> and what objectivism says is that you're alive and what morality is about, what the good is about, is learning to live in the 80, 90, 100 years that you have here on earth to live. So you matter to yourself. And then in terms of purposes, you then have to establish and set and define your own purpose in life. And the basic purpose, the fundamental, is to live. But you have to then define, what is that to live? What kind of life am I going to live and why? So you don't look to some outside source that gives you purpose in life, that tells you what to do, that orders you around. As I talk about in uh, my article, Finding Morality and Happiness Without God, the religious conception of morality is someone giving you orders and you are blindly to obey. And I give the example of Abraham and Isaac, that um, well-known, famous or infamous, you might say, story in the Bible of where God commands Abraham to sacrifice his own son. And Abraham is willing to do it, is willing to do it unquestionably. And you can say, well, he has a purpose, and his purpose is to kill his son. 
But that's not a real purpose. That is just following orders. What objectivism says is to have a real purpose in life is to grasp that you're a living thing. You should be on a quest to live and to establish a purpose in your life is to establish this commitment that I want to live and I want to build a truly human life and to have that as your purpose in life. <clears throat> so objectivism, I think, rejects that religion offers any intelligible answers to these that are fundamental questions of life, of who am I, why do I matter, why am I here? To, to take Mike's questions, uh, but that a philosophy, and in particular objectivism, does seek to answer, and in the case of objectivism, does give you answer to these fundamental questions in life.